drive, just press continue on them. And once it's done, it'll just bring you back to your properties and you can just see that they have now added all application packages. It's set to full control and we can press OK. But once you have all of that set, you can begin transferring things onto your USB drive. Again, if you've already set this up using my methods through RetroArch, like you probably have most things good to go. But we'll start with PS2 games. So my PS2 games folder here. If you have a large collection of physical PS2 games, you can dump those using a DVD drive on your computer. I have a tutorial on the channel on how to do this. Link in the description below. Otherwise, you can resort to the shady parts of the net. I really don't care how you come about it. Just don't ask me for illegal download links because I'm never going to provide them. So I have all of my PS2 games in chud format, and then I have one CD-based game here, Half-Life, still in bin format. Chud format is great, runs natively in XBSX2, and really saves space compared to just uncompressed disk images. If you are interested in compressing your PS2 games in the Chud format, I will have a link to the PS2 ISO to Chud file here that I used in previous videos to convert my games into Chud format, so link in the description below. But if you have multi-disc games, you can separate these into subfolders if you desire. But once you have your game is good to go, you just need to add them to your USB drive. So I have already done so. I put them in a folder named games and there they are, my PS2 games. Yay. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we're just going to ignore transferring those over just to save on some time because they're right there. Next up, PS2 BIOS. So PS2 BIOS files, they can come in a multi-file format or a single file format. I have two multi-file format BIOS files right here. Just one from my fat, one from my slim when I did my BIOS dumping tutorials. So if you have a PS2 still, you can easily dump your BIOS file on either a fat or a slim. The process really isn't that complicated. January in the year of our Lord, 2023. Amen. We made it into this new year. Amen. And we want to take this new year by storm. Amen. We want to do all that God has commissioned us to do, and we want to do it in the spirit of excellence. Amen. So I want to talk to us tonight as we, we enter into this year that we are planted for progress. Amen. God did not just put us here to occupy space. He put us here to do some things. Amen. We are, we are planted for progress. We are the planting of the Lord. Amen. So we know we have, we, we, we got good seed, amen? We come from good stock, amen? And then we've got to understand that the ball is in our court. It's our, it's our time to do what God has called us to do, amen? We can't sit back and keep waiting for somebody else to do it. God has called us, positioned us, and empowered us to take the, to, to take the lead. See, as the planning of the Lord, can I say this? We know that uh, uh, our job is to believe and receive, amen? Yeah, all things are possible to him that believes, amen? And we have to receive from the Lord. But God wants us to move past just believing and receiving to occupying and restoring. I'm going to say that one more time. God wants us to move past just believing and receiving his power to occupy doing business in this world and restoring what he put in place. Somebody shout amen. And we're going to understand this as we go through this lesson tonight. Amen. Uh, I want you to pray with me. We're going to go ahead and get into this word of God. Uh, we thank God for the Holy Spirit who is going to lead us and guide us and cause enlightenment and illumination to come. Father God, we give you the glory. We honor you. We praise you, O God. Thank you, O God. Uh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. As we go through this time of study, oh God, not of me, but all of you, Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you, oh God, that uh, uh, we will not be hindered by any satanic or demon demonic forces, but the miracle signs and wonders, your divine presence will be on this teaching. We thank you for your anointing that removes burden and destroys yoke. And we give you the glory right now for what's done in Jesus' name, amen. Can you just shout, say hallelujah to the Lamb of God? All right, glory to God, glory to God. So I want to go to Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 8 and 9, amen. We're talking about life in God's garden, amen. Look what it says in verse 8, 8, 8, 8 9, and maybe, maybe 10 as well. Look what it says. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant for sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden. The tree of the knowledge of, uh, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
God planted this garden now, and then he put man whom he had formed in the garden. God planted a garden, then he put man whom he had formed out of the dust of the ground. He put that man into that garden. And look at uh, uh, Genesis 2.15. Genesis 2.15 says, watch this, then God said, then God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Find somebody that he has to tend and keep it. Amen. Uh, uh, that, uh, that, that, that means that he, he, he's responsible for the garden. He's responsible as the planting of the Lord. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, all that dwell in it. But he, the earth he's given to the children of men. Somebody shout amen. So God has given us responsibility as men and women in the earth ring. We are the planning of the Lord, and God means for us to do the things necessary to bring about his vision, his will, his agenda in the earth realm. Let's go back to Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 26 and through 27. We would say, then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, and let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and everything that does what? Creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, both male and female created he them. Okay? Well, look at verse 28 now. Then God blessed them and said, and God, and God said to them, be fruitful, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Somebody shout amen. All right. All right. Go ahead. Oftentimes, when we hear this scripture, we kind of just say, okay, we made an image of God. But uh, go, go back, go back, go back, go back. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple things here I want to look at. God says he wants us to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. Now, now, what does he want us to fill the earth with? His glory, who he is. He, he's made us, he's created us like him, and he wants us to fill the earth with his glory. But look what he says, uh, fill the earth and subdue it. Why do, so so what, does, what does that suggest to you and I? The fact that we have to now subdue something. It's under our control, but what, what else, what else, okay? Something is out of control that we got to bring back in control. Amen? And, and, and can I just say this? Oftentimes we as people... Uh, 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 we want to be, uh, uh, I'm how do I, how do I say? we want to, uh, uh, we want to be the best us instead of wanting to be the best us for God. I hope you understood what I just said. Uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 sometimes you and I have to learn how to subdue an attitude that, that can come up in us and cause us to think we all that and a bag of chips and not be not want to be who God, what God called us to be. Amen. And so sometimes before we can subdue anything in the earth realm, we got to subdue that spirit that tries to rise up in us. I hope you understand what I'm saying now, because, you know, you, you, you can't take control of nothing if you ain't got control of you. Amen. If, if, if God doesn't have control of you, then, 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 then the ability to control the enemy is not going to be there. Was well, not by might nor by power, but by God's spirit. But if your spirit thinks your spirit is able to do it without God, you're in the wrong place. Am I making sense? So you got to have, you got to bring, before we can subdue anything in the earth realm, we got to make sure that we've got the self-control that God wants us to have so we can control us. Amen. We got to be submitted to God. So you, you thank you. You can't operate in the authority if you're not operating under the authority. Glory to God. Glory, thank you, preacher. Glory to God. So he said, you know, to have them, look at this, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. What does that suggest to you? What does that kind of say to you? Amen. I like that. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Even in atmospheres where they're not necessarily germane to where we operate. I'm held on the ground by gravity. I'm not floating around in the air, but he tells me I can have control over things in the air. 
I don't breathe underwater without a breathing apparatus, but he's telling me I can have control over things that move under the earth. Come on now. You got to start seeing the power and the authority and the ability that God has given us as the planting of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. Look, 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 look watch this. And see, that's why we got to humble ourselves, submit to God's authority. In Matthew 20, 23 and 11, it's not going to be there, but they'll just put it down. He said, uh, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then uh, Luke comes back in Luke 14 and, and 11, he says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and, who, and, and, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. But now let's look at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 2 through 6, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 through 6. Look what it says in the King James or New King James verse. Here. He said, not to be so shaken, uh, not to be so shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. Let no one deceive you it by any means, for the day, of, for the day will not come unless the falling away uh, comes first. And that, and the man of the, and the, excuse me, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called of God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself to be, uh, showing himself that he is God. Do not, do you not remember that I, what I, excuse me. Do you not remember that when I was still there with you, I told you these things, and now, and now you know that, and now you know how what is restraining that He might be revealed in His own time. Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit is restraining stuff. Amen. The Holy Spirit is holding some stuff back. But now He says, uh, uh, "We don't want to be." Remember, we talked about subduing. You got to get you, you got to bring you under subjection. If you don't bring you under subjection, if, you're not, if you don't submit to the authority of God, you cannot operate in the authority of God. Amen? If you do not submit to the authority of God, you cannot operate under the authority of God. And so here he talks about the son of perdition. Uh, 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 he's basically talking about sin. He's basically talking about uh, uh, that, 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 that one who rebels against God who wants to be, be God and not submit it to God. Remember what Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 22? When Jesus is talking uh, to God, he said, he said, while I was there with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. None of them is lost except the son of, position, the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So my point here is, again, going back to in Genesis, where he says you got to subdue some things. One of the first things before we start trying to subdue anything else, we got to subdue that rebellious spirit that tries to rise up in us. We have to bring that spirit under subjection in line with the word of God, because as the planning of the Lord, God has a plan for you. God wants you to, you to restore some things, but you can't restore if you're not, if you're not in the right condition. Amen. Lord God, it's, it's like it's like that old saying, hurt people hurt people. Amen. So you don't want to you don't want to be a hurt person trying to heal somebody. Come on now. You you want to experience the healing power of God so that when you lay hands on the sick, they really do recover. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So this is why we want to do we want to get to this. Now, look, uh, we can go forward. Ten means to cultivate. So again. If, if, if I'm going to take control over the earth realm, I've got to I, I got to know how to cultivate the earth in a manner that makes it uh, ready to produce. Amen. It means uh, it means, uh, uh, it means to prepare the land for crops and garden. It means to be fruitful and increase in the land to take the land from where it is to another level uh, by the grace of God. Now watch this. Uh, our, a lot of our forefathers were sharecroppers and. On, 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 on farms and on plantation work. work. Uh, then they bought some land. Amen. And when they bought the land, it was probably a whole bunch of trees, right? All right. And over a period of time, what did they do? They started clearing the land, cutting down the trees, pulling up the stumps, moving the boulders, cultivating the land, preparing the land. 
to here it is some some years later, you 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 inherit a hundred acres of land. And it's in and, and all you gotta do is go to John Deere and go out there and plant some. But 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 it wasn't like, come on, church, it wasn't like that all the time. Somebody had to go in and cultivate, somebody had to go in and clear, somebody had to go in and do something to, to put it in condition where you can now enjoy the benefits of it. That's our job in the earth ring. Even though the, the enemy has come in like a flood and does some stuff, but when we allow the standards of God to be on the inside of us, not only can we refill the earth, not only can we subdue the earth, not only can we be fruitful and multiply, all those things that God wants us to do and take dominion, it'll happen because we know how to tend. We know how to tend to it, amen? We know how to cultivate it, amen? And look at that word subdue. Subdue means to conquer or to bring into subjection or to bring under control. What's that last part? By the exertion, by the exertion of will. Amen. See? Hallelujah. What does that suggest to you when you read that part? By the assertion of will. Amen. We see, we're living in a fallen world, but by the obedience of God, we can take the world back. We're living in a fallen world, but by the power of God, we can restore order in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 says this. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So if, uh, uh, we read a scripture not long ago, there must first be a will in mind. So it goes on to say, it's not a question of what you don't have. Or, or, as long as you got that will in mind, you, when you make yourself available to God, everything of God will become available to you. Amen? So you got to have a will in mind. To do this, we have to have a willing heart, a willing mind. If we're going to take it back, we got to have a will in mind. And look what he says in uh, Philippians chapter 2, glory to God. I hope y'all getting this tonight, amen. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, look what he says. Therefore, my beloved, as you have uh, uh, always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Look what he says now. To work out your own salvation with fear and trivial. Trib but look at verse 13. For it is God who works in you both to what? Will and to do his good pleasure. So the more I line myself up with the word of God, God's going to help me bring things back. First of all, me, hallelujah, get me in line by the word of God. And then I can help do get things in line according to the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, we again, we're living in this fallen world. But God has put us here to bring order back to some things. Now, y'all probably have heard about the seven spheres or the seven pillars or the seven mountains, right? Amen. Of influence in the world. Amen. And, and, and uh, let me see how we do this. Glory to God. Okay. Go, go to the seven spheres. Oh, you there? I'm going to stop. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the family, the church or religion, education, government, media, arts and entertainment and sports, and economics. Those are the seven spheres of influence. Those spheres, those spheres, those mountains, those pillars are the areas that God is sending us as Christians, come on now, to go in and have dominion, to go in and bring back under the subjection of the word of God. Okay. If we're going to be the people that God has called us to be, we're the planning of the Lord. Amen. And he's put us in the earth realm, not just to occupy space, but to occupy, do business. Come on now, till he comes. So, so we got to go past just believing and receiving, understanding that what I believe and what I receive now gives me the power to occupy, to do God's business, and to start restoring stuff the way God wants to restore. I'm going to make it sense. Glory to God. Quiet on me. So uh, somebody said family. Family. When you hear the word family, what do you think about? Kinfolk. All right. Kinfolk. All right. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. What else? Mom, dad, and kids. Amen. Amen. Okay. God has defined family. Amen. Adam and Eve and kids. God has defined, God has given us his spiritual, his biblical definition of family. Now, we know that in America, well, we have kids growing up in homes, 75, 85% are growing up in single parent homes, whereas either the mother or the father could be the grandmother. Okay. Uh, now, now that, that is a family. Somebody said that is a family. It is a family. It, it may not be God's ideal family, but it is a family. But when we start to look at some of the things that's happening in the world, the world is trying to redefine family. You got to stay with me now. The world is trying to redefine family. The world will tell you that if you got two bodies, even if the two bodies are just alike, that's a family. Y'all quiet on the bro. That is not how God defines family. Family in a family might end up going to grow. How you going to grow? You get two, 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 two. There you go. Come on now. Come on now. And, and, and uh, again, I'm not. I, 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 God's definition. Come on. So God gave the pattern for the family he, in come Genesis. On. That's right. Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Then told them to be fruitful and multiply. To be fruitful and multiply. So we have some little Christians running around. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And God doesn't want us deviating from his path. Amen. Can, can I say this? How many know that nothing separates you from God's love? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, prove it. While you were cutting up like a new pair of scissors, Christ died on the cross for you. Amen. Now, 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 God loves you unconditionally. But as long as you want to hold on to sin, it is the sin that you love that you won't let go of that keeps you separated from him. Let me just tell you something else. The love of God, the grace, the mercy, and the long suffering of God ain't going nowhere. Amen. But then there is also something that ain't going nowhere is the wrath of God. Wrath of God is the consequences for sin. Now, if you're saved, the wrath is gone. If you're saved and you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you ain't got to worry about the wrath of God. It's off the table. But if you're holding on to your sin, God still loves you. He just don't like the sin. And you have to exhort your will to say, God, I don't want it either. Come on, talk back to me now. Uh, told Jesus, you know, that his brother or sister or something was outside waiting on him. And then Jesus replied, said, who is my mother? And who is my brothers? He pointed to the disciples and said, here are my mother and my brother. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So then that's the family. And see, when you're doing the will of God, make it no difference if you're black or white. If you're doing the will of God, we both doing what God has called us to do, and we're doing it in a manner that pleases God. We all from one blood anyway. Amen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. Is that mm -hmm. the body of Christ? Mm -hmm. The family of God. But we got to know the, the, 
Don't want you to lose sight of the, bi the biological side or the, the physical side of, or, or, or definition of family. So that, see, because the enemy wants you to think that, that two, two men in married make a family. Now, it may make a family in the earth realm, but it's not a family according to the pattern that God has set. Watch out, man. Come on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Outside of the will of God. Come on. You can't look at a picture on the box and 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 and, 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 and think just by looking at the picture on the box, I got this. Amen. You gotta read the man. And see, okay, get these seven pillars, amen. Because if you start to mess with one, then it's easy, you know, it's easy to mess with two. When you start talking about when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when we're not operating like the family of God or, or, or God's pattern, and then we come into the church and the church decides that it wants to operate like the world, then it, it starts to try, I have to say try, to redefine what family is and saying that it's okay because God loves you unconditionally. No, no, you, we have to teach the truth, not somebody else's truth. Amen. We got to stay with what thus saith the Lord. Amen. So, 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 so the church has to make sure that it stays with the word of God. Not fables, not traditions of men, not, you know, not, not all, uh, uh, and it is made up stuff. And let me go on and say this. With God, there's no such thing as separation of church and state. Because he said with Jesus, the government shall be upon his shoulder. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Excuse me. Excuse me. But we got to understand the power of God. And we got to let God be God. If we're going to be the planting of the Lord, and we're going to subdue. Amen. Edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only God can do mm -hmm. Amen. And see, God is sovereign, but He done put the sovereign God says, Adam, I made it, you tend to it. I made it, you cultivate. I made it, you take care of it. In other words, in other words, we can't sit back and say, well, the sovereign God going to do it. No, no, no. He put you in a body. And he placed you here for such a time as this. And you got to exert, uh -huh, you got to exert your will over the will of the enemy. God's trying to grow you up. Amen. You say you're a seasoned saint. Come on now. Lord God, it, 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 it's time for you to act like you've been seasoned. Amen. You say you're the light of the world. Let your light, I feel like saying now. You got to let your light shine. Amen. And see, okay, family, church, and religion. Look at education. Education. They're trying to push certain things down to preschool. Preschool talking about, you know, do you feel like a boy? Do you feel like a girl? Free school. Well, why, 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 why? Because if they can start indoctrinating at an early age, they grow up thinking wrong is right. And y'all know it's hard, it's hard to unlearn something you done learned. 
Uh huh. So they, so they know. And, and, and if, 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 hallelujah, if, if the school teaches something, when they come to church, when they come to Sunday school, we got to make sure we teach it what's right. Amen. And, and, and we, we, we ain't scared of no teacher. Y'all better help me. We ain't scared of no board of education. Come on now. We, 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 have, we I told you, you need to tell me. I ain't scared of you. Let God be true. Come on now. Come on, come on now. And then if, if, if push come to shove, we have to start our own. God, help me. Hey, how y'all doing? Glory to God. Let's come on back. So, so edu education is important. It's important. Remember now, you and I are the planting of the Lord. Amen. And we're planted for progress. And part of our job now is to occupy and to restore. Amen. So, and then government. Government, government, government. And again, we're talking about God's definition of government and not man's definition of government. In government, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. In, 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 in God's government, uh, you know, hallelujah, this is, this, th these are my commandments. Can I tell you something? Grace does, not, it, grace does not eliminate you from keeping the commandments. Grace does not uh, 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 make you immune to obeying what God doesn't say. Grace is the power to obey. The power to do what he said in, in, in Philippians, now it is God who will work in you both to will and to do. Glory to God. Oh, you be help me out, Digna, according to his good pleasure. Not what pleases you. Let me hold it. You see, see, sometimes we're more concerned about pleasing ourselves and pleasing others than we are concerned about pleasing God. God said, it's time. Hey, come on now. I, I want you to be a good you, but I want you to be a good you for me. I want you to be, be the best you can be, but I want you to be the best you can be for me. I want to get glory out of your life. Because what the boy was saying, is my breath in your lungs. Y'all better help me up in here. Mm. We all right? Media. 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 Go, go to the next slide. Media. Media. Now, now, we know the media don't. Fox News, CNN, all right. But, 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 but I was riding, I was picking up my grandkids, and God said, well, I'm not just talking about media, but I'm talking about everything in your immediate sphere. See, because a lot of times, you are more influenced by what's going on around you than you are what, than what's on television. Mm -hmm. And see, you got to start being cognizant of what you are around. The scripture says, guard your heart or keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. So if you're around crazy stuff, if you're around mess all the time, you... you, you, you Old folks say, if you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with what? Please, come on now. So, so, so you got to start, start understanding that all the, uh, not, not only the news and all the stuff that you open yourself up to, but you got to, where you, you spend your time. Where you spend your time. Who you spend your time around. You ever spent your time around negative people and then wonder why you starting to sound like a lemon? Arts and entertainment and sports. This is important right here. Uh, why? Why is this important? Arts, entertainment, and sports. Because that pretty much what the young people in K-21. That's good. Keep talking. Entertain. We were watching a movie the other night. That's all they were talking about. He got to flow from your heart. And, 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 and. scientists say, you know, scientists, just flow. But scientists say, 
that we will be entertained. The reasonable, the rational, the logical side of your brain shuts down. So as God starts to develop you and you decide you want to be entertained more so than you want to be grown, you'll, you'll sit there and <laughs> you ever heard of people say sometimes, oh, church was good. What the pastor preached about? I don't know. Because they came to be entertained and they didn't hear one word. But when he cussed, Oh, he did something crazy? Because God wants us to get the word out. Oh. My wife and I were talking because uh, we were watching a football game, and we you know we saw, saw the hit, and, 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 and uh, you know, the young man that, that and, and, and then some, somebody had the nerve to want to threaten the life of the guy who hit him. I mean, they, 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 were, they, they were playing football. Same thing happened with the guy that dropped the pen at, at, at JSU. Could have gave us another championship, help us, Jesus. But because he dropped the pass, everybody talking about it. And then I'm sure door is okay, but he threw another pass. Couldn't nobody catch it. Wasn't nobody talking about him. Wasn't nobody sitting on that. Understand what I'm saying? Things can go viral, but here we are. God, God wants to show us how to do it his way. Amen. That's why it's so important that we go into these different spheres and start to take dominion over them. Start to bring them under the subjection of the word of God. Economics, uh, business, science, technology. All these things can be used for good. Amen. But they can also be used for bad. Amen. But, when, but as the planning of the Lord, when we get in there, they're going to be used for good. Somebody shout amen. Let me show you why I'm talking about this. Go to, go to Deuteronomy. Go, go, go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Look what it says. Okay. Uh, while y'all look at that one, um, if you got your Bible, Look up Deuteronomy chapter 7, and let's look at verses 1 through 3. Now, we just got verse 1 up there, and verse 1 talks about uh, this is where uh, a lot of the, these seven spheres come from, these seven nations that God told them to drive out of the land and to utterly destroy them so that they would not have a negative impact, a negative influence on the children of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look what it says. And, and somebody who, who somebody who got a real good reading voice, uh, hallelujah, and know how to enunciate and pronounce these words, bless the Lord, hallelujah. Read for me, De Deuteronomy 7, 1 through 3, and read it with the microphone, glory to God. Who going to do it? Minister, Minister Harris, you going to do it? Start at verse 1. When the Lord, your oh, God. Come on, a little high, a little high. When the Lord, your God, brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast down many nations for you, the Hittites and the Gerashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jeb Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Hold on right there. He said, I want you to run out. All seven, and all seven are larger and mightier than you. But you got to understand, when God gives you a command, when God gives you a word, you got to know that you have the ability, if the spirit is willing, you have the ability to do what God said for you to do. Our problem sometimes is that we look at how big something is, and we start to think that, 
can't do this or we can't do this, but God done said, run them out. Go ahead. And when the Lord your God delivers them over you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. Mm. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them, nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Uh, look, he said, don't make no treaty with them. See, a lot of times we try to negotiate with the devil. Going back to that government, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. When we as Christians start compromising the word, that gives the enemy room to weaken the body of Christ. But we're planning for progress. We're the planning of the Lord. All is in our form. And we're deciding that we are, we are going to do what God has called us to do. Somebody shout amen. See, our mandate, go to the next slide for me. Our mandate is to bring godly change to our nation and to the world by reaching these seven spheres, these mountains, these, these areas of influence with the word and the principles of God. That's our mandate. It ain't just to have good church on Wednesday and good church on Sunday. It's to raise up leaders. Come on, church. Is to raise up, raise up men and women of God who are sold out for the purpose of God. And, you know, for, you know, again, we be thinking sometimes we can't do it. But if you got your Bible, y'all got it with you because y'all are smart church. Go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. It's not going to be up there. Go to Matthew chapter 15. And let's look at verses 10 through 14. Matthew chapter 10. What did I say? Matthew 15, 10 through 14. When you got to shout amen. Who want to read it out loud? Uh, your mama said you. <laughs> what I'm reading. Okay, go ahead. Starting at verse 10. Start at verse what? Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, I changed to the Amplified Version. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said, listen and understand this. It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that defiles and dishonors him, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles and dishonors him. Then the disciples came and said to Jesus, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard you say this? He answered, Every plant which my heavenly father did not plant will be torn up by the root. Leave them alone. They are blind guides. If a blind man leaves a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Yeah, hold on right there. The scripture that I, the word that I want, he said, for everything that the Holy Ghost, everything God didn't plant, he going to uproot. I want you to understand, the enemy has deeply rooted some things in these seven spheres. Amen. But just because they rooted there don't mean they're going to stay there. Glory to God. By the power of God, those things can be uprooted. Amen. How many of you know that when, as you were growing up, something got in you that shouldn't have been in you? Amen. But he said, it's not what goes in a man that defiles a man. It's what comes out of a man. And you were a defiler probably as long as that stayed in you. Amen. But how many of you know that when you got saved, <laughs> well, this brother said it was that rod, that, 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 that chastening rod of mama. Uh, they said, what, what the scripture said, uh, the seed is in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will chase it far from him. When we allow ourselves to be corrected by the Lord, and we start submitting to God, we now submit to his authority. Now we can operate under his authority, by his authority, to bring order into the world. Amen? So, and see, part of our mandate is we got to go in. He said, what he said, uh, go ye into all the world, teaching, baptizing in the name of the Father. So, come on now. That, this is our mandate. Amen? Glory to God. Okay, okay. So, uh, again, we're still working on something. Go to the next slide. 
Go to Isaiah. You're going to see it up there, Isaiah 61. Any comments up to this point? Amen. I told myself I wasn't going to go, wasn't going to go fast because, yeah, hallelujah. Isaiah, look what it says. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, this, this is Isaiah 61, 1 and 2, and it talks about the good news of salvation. It's talking about uh, 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 the fact that you and I, as the anointed ones of God, the power and authority that we have as the anointed ones of God. Amen. This is where Jesus found himself in the scriptures in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. He, he, he speaks the, these same words. So you and I got to find ourselves here. Amen. And don't, don't, don't leave here. Glory to God. Know who you are. Look what he says. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. Uh, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. Let's go on to the next one. To counsel, to counsel those who mourn in Zion, to give them what? Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and to, uh, uh, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And look at the verse 4. And they shall what? rebuild the old ruins and they shall what raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities the desolation of many generations see see you and i because we've been reconciled reconciled and restored we have a mandate to reconcile and restore the only way we're going to progress is we do what god said and we take our mandate, we take our charge, we take being a Christian to heart. Glory to God. He said, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. What does it mean to proclaim? Come on, talk to me. What does it mean to proclaim? To tell. To shout, go, go to the next slide. I like that, to shout it out. Glory to God. Uh, to exalt, to praise public. Look, see, see, uh, we can do a lot of stuff privately. But glory to God, God said, I need you to take me public. Father, I, he said, I don't need no closet Christians. Come on, Terry. Glory to God. I, I, I don't need somebody that, 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 that would tear the church up. Hallelujah. On Sunday morning, just tap it up. But then get out there when they need to say something about God, can't say nothing. I don't mean no harm, but y'all know what I'm talking about, amen? Look, look. He said, he said uh, now, 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 I'm going to talk to, talk to y'all right here. He says, to decree and declare, to decree and declare something like a king, like a king. What I'm talking about. Come on. Mm-hmm. Amen. Nobody can change. When a, when a king decrees something, that decree can't be changed unless it's changed by the king. See, that's, again, can I back up? That's why these seven spheres are so important. Because People are trying to decree something and declare something and make it so. And if we don't challenge it, amen. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. And, and Minister Hedrick says all the time, what's love got to do with everything? God's love has to show through in everything. Amen. Because even, 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 even when we're, even when we are pulling down the strongholds of the enemy, we still got to do it in love. Amen. 
when, especially when you're dealing with somebody who's dealing with an inf uh, infirmity, dealing with, uh, you, know, you know, dealing with something, you got to know God will show you how to help them out of that. Amen. Uh, God, God will show you first and foremost, don't, you don't come to them or go to them con with a condemning spirit. Amen. But God will show you how to talk to them that they, they, their spirit will be convicted by the words that God gives you to use. Because God wants you to restore. Amen. Just be, just be present. Just be present. Look, look now, uh, uh, is there a story in the Bible where Jesus didn't say uh, uh, anything but, but conviction came? Uh, I, I was looking at my man here because he preached that thing that day. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, that tax collector. He, he said, Jesus said, Z Zacchaeus, come down. Today I got a lodge or eat at your house. Went to Zacchaeus' house, and he was sitting there eating that fried chicken. Uh, he was sitting there eating. He was sitting there eating, and, and Zacchaeus w w was there, and Zacchaeus started to say, uh, uh, Lord, if I wrong anybody, I'm going to restore Four, 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 seven, four. I mean, just, I mean, I mean, I mean, he just started confessing and Jesus wasn't saying anything. Jesus was just present in his house and it brought conviction on the house. And what Jesus did say after everything else, he said, Lord, this man too is a son of Abraham. He said, salvation have, has come to your house for this man is a son. But before he said, he, his presence made all the difference. Man, that's all right then. Lord. See, uh, Psalms uh, 30, Psalms 107, 2 and 3 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy, who's gathered us out of the land from the east and from the west, and from the north to the, from the south. We've got to get to the point where we, are, we, we actually start to Proclaim that we are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can I say something to you? Faith come by here. Amen. See, see, you, 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 you may be saved, but you may not be totally convinced. Help me, Holy Ghost. And you might, you got, you might have to start keep saying it until you convince yourself. Hallelujah. You, you, you talk yourself into. You, can I talk? That, how many of them talk themselves into doing some praise? Back in the past, back in BC. We don't, we don't want to talk about it, do we? But, but now, glory to God, when, 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 when we read something in the word of God, we ought to say, oh, my goodness, is that, is that possible? Yeah. And, and, uh, what I told Tyrone, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just sharing this with you, that there was a time, you know, uh, I, I, you know I, I, be saying, I be saying, I want St. Al to come to me and say they want to buy this, 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 this spot. You know, we will find us another spot. We'll find us another spot. That's what I said. And, and I was riding and I'm thinking that. And then, 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 then the Lord said, why don't you buy St. Anne? I'm saying that because we try to keep things within the, 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 the realm of what we think is possible and not give God room to say with me something. Oh, you better help me. All things are possible. Now please understand, I ain't, I ain't ready, I ain't trying to buy something. Okay. Not yet. Either. Look what he says here in Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. He says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory to God. How many, want the, how many know you got the promise of the Spirit? Amen. Now, can anybody just kind of give me a couple of little things? Because we only got seven, 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 fifty three. Uh, and we got communion. What does the blessing of the Lord or uh, 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 the blessing of Abraham look like? What does the blessing of, when you hear about the blessing of Abraham, I come upon you. 
when you think about Abraham, what are some of the things that you think about as being blessed like Father Abraham? The Bible says he's the father of faith. So what do you think about? What comes to your mind when you understand that you, you, you are blessed like Abraham, with the blessing of Abraham that come upon you? Amen. Good, good, good catch. For all the, Paul writes, for all the promises of God are yes and amen to the glory of God by us. See, again, there, there's my will. There's my will. I, I, I got to believe it. Amen. Wait us, wait us, wait us. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk it out like he did. Amen. Wherever I come on now. That, the, the blessing is there. Amen. I, I like that. We, 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 we. Favor with God, favor with man. Glory to God. Look, when, when he hit me with that, I had to go to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14, and for the sake of time, we're going to go talk about it. Genesis chapter 14, verse 13 and 20. You know that Lot was taken. Lot was taken captive. But the Bible says, watch this now, that when he was taken captive, one of the brothers broke free. Broke free. Amen. One of the brothers got out, came and told Abraham, they done took Lot. They got him locked up down there. And so Abraham, look what the Bible says now. It says, it says, it says, verse 14. Now, when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed 318 trained servants who were born in his house, and he went in pursuit as far as Dan. What hit me was, I need you to see the longevity of the blessing that's on Abraham. It wasn't just a family. Uh -uh. No, no. He said, you have to be about 20 years old to be armed to go to battle. It says here that there was 318 born in his house. You hear it? 318 born, raised up to at least age 20 in his house that he used to go get locked. In other words, God sustained Abraham in such a way that he was able to raise his own arm. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. That's what the word said. Trained servants who were born in his home. You got to see God's ability. And, 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 and it don't stop right there. It get good. Because when they went and got Lot, brought him back, this when Melchizedek shows up. There's no beginning. There's no end. He's just there. And Abraham offers time, a tenth of everything to Melchizedek, who is a type and shadow of Christ. And when we start to serve him, that's the plan. The fact that he's planted us here at such a time as this, the purpose, all being in our court. We're going to do something with it. Somebody shout amen. We ain't just going to dribble it either. Amen, glory. We're going to move it. Amen. Any questions or comments? Uh, we will come to because our time we got away from us. Amen. Any questions or comments? Glory to God. He's enlarging our tent. His hand is with us. He said, if thou can believe all things are possible, then go to God. Come on now. We got a couple minutes. For, in a couple minutes. Couple, in, in, come on. Talk to him. Not believing with your whole heart. Again, we said earlier at the beginning, 
And things we have to believe, we have to receive. Things that I believe and now that I receive, I now have to act. I now have to be stored. I now have to use my faith to do with my faith what he said I need to do with my faith. My faith is not just for me to get saved and go to heaven. My faith is to make a difference while I'm here in the earth. If that and if that can believe. If that. And 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 if, if, uh, you know, we, we have to learn to move when God seems to move, to be still when God seems to be still. And see, we have to also learn that everything ain't what it looks like. Amen. Because the enemy will try to show you something and make you think one day. But if you just wait and trust God, amen. We talked in our Monday night class about when revelation comes too late. When revelation comes too late. See, a lot of times, you ever heard the phrase, hindsight is 20, 20? Uh, everything in retrospect. But there's some times when people got revelation too late. Eh? The, the rich man in Lazarus, he didn't get the revelation that God was God until he was in hell. That, that's a little bit too late. That, that, that's, a, that's a little bit too the, the, we talk about the, the five virgins who didn't carry enough oil with them. They got the revelation a little too late. They didn't come in. They didn't go in. So God wants us to get the revelation, but we don't want the revelation to come too late. The, the rich, the, 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 the prodigal son, he got the revelation in time. In the, in the pig pen, he came to himself. I'm going to rise and go back to my father. Who else? Who, who do we get? Uh, Hezekiah. Got the revelation. When he said, you're going to die, you're going you're gonna to die and not live. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he began to pray. And before the man, the servant of God could get out of the courtyard, he said, go back and tell Hezekiah, I've added 15 more years to his life. We don't want to get revelation to him. When God gives it to him, we want to move it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. And move out of them. Amen. You remember, we, we just come out of the holiday season. And come on down because we have to. Uh, uh, Herod called his wise men. When and where is Christ child going to be born? He's going to be born in Bethlehem. They had the information, but they were still at the house. The, the, the wise men have come all the way from the east following a star because they saw the star. So, so, so just because, see, a lot of folks got revelation, but they don't use the revelation they got. If you're in this house and you never, uh, 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 we, we, we're going to do communion offline, amen. We're, we're going to do communion offline, amen. But y'all want to do it online. If you're in this house today, glory to God, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're, in the, you're, you're where you need to be, amen. If you've heard this word and you, 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 you feel the spirit of the Lord saying, you, you need to repent. You need to have Christ Jesus in your life. All you got to do is say, Father, I'm a sinner. Help me. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God. Come into my life and save me. He'll meet you right where you are. He'll come into your life. He'll save you. He, he, he's, he's at the door of your heart and he's knocking right now. Open up the door, let him in. Get saved tonight and let him start you on a new life. The Bible says any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. Start your new life tonight. If you once accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you allow the cares, the trials, the tribulation of the world to cause you to drift away, but tonight, Tonight, glory to God, you know that you're planning for progress. You know that you're the planning of the Lord. You know that God has a plan for your life. You want to rededicate your life. That's all you got to do is come and say, Father, forgive me. Take me back. And he'll meet you right where you are. Amen. Glory to God. Last but not least, if you don't have a church home, 
Hallelujah. We are Mount Carmel Ministries 2015 Rose Street. We'll be glad to have you as a part of our fellowship. We'll teach you as God is teaching us how you can win in every area of your life. Amen. Those are the three things that we offer to you tonight. An opportunity for you to get to know Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. An opportunity for you to rededicate your life. An opportunity for you to come to If you're online, just hit us up online and someone will get back with you as quick as possible. Amen. Because we want you to be blessed of the Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you for what you've done tonight with this class. We ask them, O oh God, that your anointing be upon this word. We ask them that this word go into the heart of your people, O oh God, that they are changed and never are the same, that they know that they are the planning of the Lord, that they are planning for progress, and the ball is in their court, and you're going to show us what to do with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.